Fuck, dude. Fuck. Put it down, put it down. Oh my god. Down the table. I Jesus. didn't mean to, obviously. You just did the same thing. Alright, here. Get the other one. Pick the other. Why is this chair so. I can't. It's fucking 70 pound. Hey guys, uh, we're just doing some ad reads real quick. Uh, first one is On It. Thank you, On It, for sending us uh, Star Wars licensed <laughs> Star Wars kettlebells. So we got this Darth Vader kettlebell that I can't pick up at this angle. Um, what's this guy right here? This is Vic Berger right here. Mm. And this is Boba T on the Death Star medicine right, ball. I think that might be wrong, but we'll just we'll we'll, we'll breeze past. I didn't bing it. These are very, very high quality, solid iron, and uh, we're really impressed with all this kind of stuff. You've probably seen on it advertised on other podcasts. They're a very cool company that likes to work with creators like us. So huge thank you to on it. Uh, where can they find on it stuff? Uh, the link in the description. We will link you to all these beautiful Star Wars items and many, many more. So huge thank you to onit.com for sponsoring this episode. I, I said the link to it, and you said many more. It seemed like you were kind of like one up me on the next one. I so. have so many things in the description. I'm not even going to let you stick your little grubby mitts in there. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't like that at all. <laughs> Another huge thank you to our sponsor, Rode. Rode helped us furnish this podcast. We've been using their microphones for a very long time. They do incredibly high-quality audio gear. If you want to see some of the gear that we're using here on set, and some of our behind the scenes stuff, please check out the link in the description. There's lots of links, lots of lists and stuff. And go check out Road because they're some good boys and gals. Thanks, Road. Thank you. Thank you. Love Thanks, you. Thanks, Road. Uh, really quick before we start, I want to mention that I forgot to mention Ian was from Smosh, which, you know, is something a good host would do, but I didn't do that. So enjoy the episode. All set? Yeah, we good to go? Uh -huh. All right. Hey guys, welcome back to the Gus and Eddie podcast. Episode three, we made it. We're here. Mm -hmm. um, our guest today is a YouTube veteran, longtime YouTuber, creator of one of the biggest channels on oh. YouTube, I think, in YouTube history. Uh, he's a comedian, writer, producer. Uh, Ian Hecox, what's hey. up, man? Uh, uh, we've done it. What is it? We've done it <laughs> what is journey? Seem like I'm gonna get murdered. Like we've done it. We've, we've we got him in here. Uh, hi guys, thank you for having me on. Uh, of course, for stopping man. by. I, um, I'm sorry I pressured you into having me on this podcast. Uh, I hope I don't screw it up. You're mm -hmm. you're already killing it. That's thank <laughs> you. I've laughed several times since good, we good. started rolling, and I'm really? speaking a I'm language, silent. so that's good. That's always good. Yeah. Were you silently laughing this whole yeah. time? Just <gasps> you weren't here. I would have heard that. I, I thought that that's I'm, what people do with our videos. They silently laugh. They go, <clears throat> that's a, yeah. If you do a live show, you know, it's always so weird when YouTubers come to a, or YouTube audiences come to a live show because you know, you make jokes and yeah. they just go, oh. yeah. <laughs> sounds like a bad AC unit. Yeah, there. it's really odd. <laughs> Please welcome Ian. <laughs> this is a quality podcast that really good stuff. <laughs> Have you ever actually done any live stuff at all or? Uh, we did, we did a live, sh so we did like a live streamed show mm -hmm. that was kind of like a, like a, a low budget SNL. Uh, so we basically, we, we got YouTube to rent out the YouTube space to us and we did something like, oops, sorry, I tapped on the table. So no okay. exciting uh, table. <laughs> I just killed your ears. Uh, <laughs> uh, we did something like, uh, six sketches, five or six sketches and had these sort of, um, pre pre taped sketches that would happen in between. So we did a sketch and then the pre tape would happen and then crew would come in and move the backgrounds out and move new backgrounds in. And we would do costume changes and it was, it was wild. Um, we'd love to do another one. It's just really expensive. So we just have to con some company into giving us a lot of money to do it. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. uh, it was so cool, but I've never done any sort of like theater type stuff. I'm, I, I'm, I got like, I get really nervous. I can't, I, I don't know if like, I can say I'm afraid of crowds, but I get super nervous beforehand. I, I, get, I call it like, uh, I get the nervous shits. <laughs> so like whenever we go to like VidCon and we have to, we do something on stage for like that, uh, I'll just be a fountain for like 
an hour or two beforehand. Yeah. Mm. And I'll get everything out of my system. Then I'll go on there because I'm I'm just psyching myself out like crazy because I and it even goes back to like high school and college. Like you remember when like uh, at the beginning of uh, at the beginning of the year, like you all go around and say your name and say something about yourself mm. or like your like your favorite movie or something. And I would be sitting there just like shaking like, oh God, like I don't know what I'm gonna say. Mm, yeah. I don't know when they're gonna call me. And I would just get so nervous. And and that that sort of continued on into my adult life with this, you know, YouTube stuff and having to be in front of people, you know, if at VidCon. I mean, yeah. I'm not usually in front of a group of people usually, but whenever I am, I'm stressed the hell out. Yeah. It's almost worse when it's like, you know, like with that icebreaker scenario where it's like you, them. you're running over the same thing. You're like, yeah. I know my name's Gus. I like automobiles. I'm going to say that. And automobiles. Like you're just yeah. going over. Here. Yeah. And you're like, hi, uh, I'm automobile. <laughs> I like Gus. <laughs> <laughs> my yeah. name's Gus. I like cars too. <laughs> Shit. No, I didn't mean it. You just got to transfer schools at that point. I mean, you, you, that's it. The yeah. icebreaker I hated was, um, and this went in, somebody did this in one of my college classes. Like the professor uh, said we should do it, which is say an adjective that starts with the first letter of your name. <laughs> it's because one, like by the time you're in high school, you're like, come on. Yeah. Why, why would I do this yeah. dumb preschool game? Also, the only one you can really do with Eddie is like energetic. And imagine <laughs> like in front of your new high school students you don't know. And you're like, I'm energetic Eddie, guys. Like, no, yeah. I can't do it. It's awful. It's terrifying. I, I hate do, that. Like, yeah, I'm trying to think of a, oh, of a better adjective than that. Uh, what's your Ian one? What's your go-to adjective? What's your go-to? <laughs> <laughs> what adjective is totally you? I would have like an I. It's like an I adjective. Uh, energetic. But yeah, yeah, just a poorly spelled energetic. Uh, wait. Just that. <laughs> yeah, just, uh, Ian. Ingenious Ian. Uh, gosh. It, it just sounds like a, it's like a really bad improv game. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. God, I hate that force stuff. I don't get why they would still do that in college, too. Yeah, like, I know. It's like, come on, we're, we're all adults here. Like, I think it's just to make everyone seem st- like feel stupid so nobody feels better than the other person. Mm-hmm. You know, you know what I mean? That. Like, gets us all at a good baseline. Yeah, it's yeah. good. Break, Tear everyone break down. them on the first <laughs> day. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, you got, like, a really, like, attractive girl there, and her name's, like, Rebecca. She's like, I'm... R- really Rebecca and you're <laughs> like wow she's dumb yeah. and then that just like you know it just takes the edge off it helps it, it helps does. a lot what's like uh, who's like the worst yeah, no don't name them by name and stuff but like what's, <laughs> what's like the worst professor or like teacher that you've had and why were they such a terrible person I honestly don't remember like really any of my teachers that's like, good <laughs> that's good they didn't I, make I guess a big that, mark th- that shows like how you know effective the the teaching institutions were for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I only remember <clears throat> a couple of them. One of one of, one teacher that I actually really did like. He was my journalism teacher, but uh, he never showed up on Mondays. Mm. I don't know if it was an alcoholism thing <laughs> or what, but it's like it's like you know Monday we're like, well, but he's not showing up. Yep, here comes a substitute teacher. I don't know how he didn't get fired because like he was rarely ever there on Monday. That's yeah. crazy. I, was that high school or? Yeah. Yeah, well, high school. How could you get away with really, that? Yeah. I don't know. I, don't know. I guess like they're maybe journalism teachers are in short supply. No, it's like that tortured writer, like they're an alcoholic just brooding at home. Yeah. That was him. He, but like he didn't seem, I mean, I don't know. I guess you can't really spot an alcoholic. Uh, I tried to I, in public. I just shout it out. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, they scatter like bugs. <laughs> <laughs> he always, he seemed like a very chipper guy. Yeah, but I guess maybe just I mean it could be a functioning alcoholic. Who knows? Could be. Did you like school like going up or what? No. Yeah. I don't. I, I I well when I so I went from high school to community college. Mm. I did the same. And I, well, I think community college is great. Um, you don't get a college experience though. It's just like a high school plus. <laughs> yeah, for sure. That's Because <laughs> you're not staying. Yeah, you're not staying in a dorm. You're just. You're like still like living with mom and dad, and you're like, oh, I'm going to school. All right, I'm back home. But I mean, community college is great. I I uh, I uh, endorse it. Um, where was I going with that? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, but community college actually was where I where I was first like, oh, 
learning's actually fun because you can actually choose what to learn mm. rather than being told that you're going to learn algebra when you don't give a crap about numbers. Yeah. Uh, instead, you know, I don't remember what exact classes. I was taking like a film class and screenwriting class and that was all really fun and I was learning things that I actually cared about. It's like, oh, this is what school's supposed to be like. Cool. Mm. Yeah. Were you already doing YouTube stuff like on the regular when you went into community college? Uh, well, we started we started making videos between the summer between high school and and college. So okay, so it was just like beginning, but those were like back in the days of like we were making like webcam lip syncs. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it wasn't very like intense. Uh, and then when that started picking up, but picked up pretty quick um, because we started in started in the summer and then and then like we put out the Pokemon lip sync music video in like November and then that like quickly like quickly rose and became like the most viewed video on YouTube mm -hmm. in like a year or something like that. Damn, that's mm -hmm. quick then. Yeah. I didn't know it climbed that quick. Yeah, well I mean there wasn't a lot of content on YouTube, <laughs> so it wasn't mm -hmm. like I mean that's the thing, like I don't I feel bad when, when people are like so how do you how do you get like started on YouTube? Like what do you what do you got to do to like to like make a living enough YouTube? I was like, dude, I you're asking the wrong person. Mm -hmm. Like it's I mean that's that's how it is with with any sort of place. It's like you know we were it's just right place at the right time. It's it's ninety percent timing. Uh, well, it's like eighty percent timing, ten percent luck, and ten percent talent at the most. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what percent concentrated power of will do you think it is? Um, I was thinking about saying that, and then I <laughs> too low. Fuck you, you, dude. <laughs> good old Mike Fuck Shinoda. You. <laughs> it's oh. never a bad time to bring up some some good old Mike Shinoda. No, I gotta do it. Do you um do you think like film school helped you do YouTube stuff at all, or like I feel like that's a, a thing that like YouTubers get all the time. Like, did film school help you? But like, did it assist you at all? Probably not film school at our community college. Mm -hmm. uh, Cause it was just like this guy that was, he was like, oh, I was an actor and like, yeah, I got residual checks for this commercial. All right, here's a film. They're like, okay, cool. So like I got to see a couple, couple cool films I'd never seen before. Um, but screenwriting helped a lot. Like, oh, yeah. because before that we were just writing all of our scripts on like a text file mm. on Mac. And so it was just like, <laughs> Ian says this, yeah. then this happens. <laughs> uh, and our, our screenwriting teacher um, was really helpful. Both Anthony and I took that class. And, uh, and that was really cool because it kind of gave us an idea of like how you structure a story and you know, building characters and, and like, you know, inciting events and climaxes and that kind of stuff. Mm. And so that, that definitely helped. Uh, we, took, we took a couple improv classes at our community college. That was really helpful. Like, I think everybody should take improv. Mm -hmm. Like, it's 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 just a cool tool for life. Because if, I don't know, just like even in conversations, like, because you know the whole thing of like improv, just say yes, but it's like true. It's like, if somebody just makes a joke at you and you're just like, no, fuck you, mm. then that's not fun. But if you're like, yeah, and then this and this and this, and you know, you just build on each other. Like it, I don't know. I think it helps in a lot of ways, not just on videos. Yeah, no, that's a good point. I um. I was so pleasantly surprised, like when I stopped by your offices a couple weeks ago. That you guys, do you regularly have like an improv like session? No, like that, we were or? just we were just kind of trying that out. We, yeah. So we yeah. So we brought uh, an improv teacher, and we we've had her come in a couple times, and we just kind of all get together and do like improv exercises, and it's like a cool way to like get to know everybody, and mm -hmm. you kind of you sometimes you can find bits from it, um, but it just it just kind of pushes you out of your comfort zone. Because we've been doing, or I've been doing uh, YouTube for almost 13 years. So it's easy to kind of fall into a groove of just like, just complacency. Like, oh, okay, like this is working. So mm -hmm. let's just continue with this. Um, and improv reminds you that, that you're not shit. And, uh, you know, <laughs> like you got you to gotta, like think on your toes and you got to, you know, actually try. Yeah. No, yeah, it cuts people down and like, well, yeah, it just it just destroys people. <laughs> it yeah. does though in a way for like if your ego is too big and you think you're like I'm hilarious, and then you get in an improv class, you're like I am 
garbage and I don't know anything and a lot of people are better at this than me. But you learn and you get yeah. to grow with it. And the hilarious people are generally the worst at improv because yeah. they're trying to be funny and that's not the point. Mm. Like I remember I remember these guys in our in our class. There was like these two guys that thought they were so funny. And and it was just like that kind of like cringy thing where they're like trying really hard to make jokes during the, like the improv sessions oh. like uh, like everyone's just kind of like sitting around like oh God. yeah mm. just feeding off each other's energy like, yeah i don't know but but you were really good oh thanks like, yeah we it's we so always fun. love having you over it's it's well, really fun well god damn it bless you guys he's not invited though yep that's fine i uh really wanted it but i'll <laughs> We do. We have our own improv class here. It's just he and I. We'll turn off the lights and just yeah. mess around and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> don't just feel around. Don't keep that in. <laughs> we'll just feel around and whatever you can grab, you can take home. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you ever want to feel like not talented or not funny, like you can go to like the improv shows here in LA and oh, it's dude. insane. Oh, yeah. Do you ever go to like those kind of shows or? I need to go more. Um, there was there's these guys that I know. They they do a, a in like a one hour action improv so it's mm -hmm. like comedy but it's like it's like action they have like crash pads and they do like stunts and stuff really yeah that's uh, awesome nothing was, is pre-planned or what like no so it's like they they have like a board and they give like a nerf gun to somebody in the audience and they're like okay shoot the board and so like the board has like like uh like a basic like action movie premise mm -hmm. like okay this one's gonna be like die hard or this one's gonna be like predator oh. And then I think like they ask for like an experience from the audience, and then they they build a story out of that. They like go away for like five minutes and come back, and they do a freaking hour Damn. of just Holy hilarious, shit. awesome stuff. And you're like, I am nothing. Yeah, <laughs> it's so intimidating. Um, we like going to the Groundlings Theater. Uh, mm -hmm. That is so fucking cool. Um, and it's just still, it's these guys. Like some of the people up there have been doing it for like literal decades, and still working in like film and television. It's just like God, I'm. How would I ever get that good? It's yeah. just so quick. That's that's like the funny thing about LA, um, because it's very it's very easy to 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 get humbled here mm -hmm. when when it comes to like being on YouTube and being like a, a comedian or whatever. Like it's easy to stay in your bubble and like read your comments and be like, I am funny, I am good, but like then you go out and you see people that are working way harder than you. Oh yeah, and mm. are way funnier. And you're like, okay, whoa, all right. I am in a very fortunate position here. Yeah. Like, like these people, you know, they, they work entire jobs on this. And then on the side, they're working hours on improv. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of like, that, that makes me like, I'm very, I'm always very fortunate for, for everything that's happened. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so true. Um, you mentioned like comments and stuff. Do you still like kind of scroll through the comments at all or? Does stuff ever get to you? I'm so afraid of checking comments. Like I can't help myself though. I gotta look. <laughs> yeah, I I came up with this analogy, uh, uh, and I probably won't be able to articulate it completely. But the way I put it is like like reading comments as a YouTuber is like being a pro boxer, where as you go on, like throughout the years, you you get better and better at boxing. You 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 see like the way somebody moves before they punch you. So you get better at like learning how to dodge punches and throw punches back. But you're still boxing and you're still gonna get punched right in your stupid face. <laughs> yeah. A lot. That's so like you, you might develop sort of a, you know, a system of like ignoring bad comments or, you know, uh, saying like, oh, well that person's just angry or whatever. Mm -hmm. but no matter how much you've, you you of a skin you've sort of armor you sort of developed mm. it's still it's still going to some comments are still going to get to you yeah uh i still read comments <laughs> yeah. did you ever have like one comment that just like stuck with you like especially when you were like earlier on um there was there was like one video that like that really like that really killed me cuz we did this um, music video for Assassin's Creed 3 mm. and it was and like we we're really proud of it it did really well um, and everybody like not everybody because that's not possible but but most of our viewers loved it mm. 
And so, um, and that was a sponsored video too, which is mm. like to have a sponsored video that, that people love is like a unicorn. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so then uh, Ubisoft came back to us when uh, Assassin's Creed 4 came out and they're like, hey, we'd love to you, for you to basically do the same thing again uh, since the last time it worked. So we were like, yeah, this time we're gonna do like a, cause the other one was kind of like a, it's not even like, I can't even call it a rap, but it had rapping in it. This this time mm. we were like, okay, this time it's gonna be rock and it's gonna be kind of like a, like, mm, I don't know, like almost like a Sum 41, but not really. So we wanted to change it. And then we had a bigger budget. We got a ship with like a cannon and we were like, what ship? Where do you get it a was, ship? Uh, Oakland. Oh, yeah. There was Sorry, like, there was like, a, <laughs> there was like a replica, like uh, colonial age ship that was there. And they had like these cannons. They fill them with like uh, black powder. Mm -hmm. So they like shoot them and they get this big blast. And we like, you know, sailed it out into the bay. We had this drone and like it was all this stuff. And like we did multiple, multiple days of shooting. We had we had a set built. We had this huge party scene. We had like we we spent so much time on it, mm -hmm. and all the comments were like, "Not as good as the last one. Oh, this one dude. sucks." Damn. God like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> and like and like the ratings are bad, and and it was just because like everyone was comparing it to the the previous one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it wasn't anything like the previous one. Yeah. Uh, so like that one, I remember that one like killed me for like a day. Like I was just like in such, and I didn't even like realize it was it was that video. I was just in such a bad mood, and like and then I thought I was like, oh my god, it's the comments. But like other than that, like comments don't usually get to me. Like back in the day, we used to like respond to them and stuff. Like mm -hmm. would like call us like you bunch of emo gays, <laughs> and we'd be like. We're we're not we're not gay. <laughs> we're not emo. Uh, actually, like our hair is like it's not emo. Like we would yeah. we would like respond <laughs> to these stupid comments like in 2006 because mm -hmm. we had no idea. Yeah, we had no idea about trolls. Uh, but yeah, I think everyone's done. That. Have you responded to comments before? Like I usually, I mean, I've responded to people. The ones that still kind of bother me are when somebody's like blatantly wrong, and it's just like yes. shut the fuck up, man. Yeah. You're not right at all. But like. Usually I can spot the troll ones. There's one I remember before I had kind of uh, gotten used to it when I was 16 because I had like a small following in high school and I made videos with my friend Zach. And uh, Zach is a runner, so he's a little bit slimmer. He's in great shape, but he's a skinnier guy. And I was at my heaviest in high school at that point. I was like 50 pounds heavier than I was right now. And there was a comment that said, um, if you took some of the fat off of Eddie and put it on Zach, you would have two normal human oh, beings. Oh, man, that's and it was awful. Like, Fuck, oh, it was so creative. It was so creative. <laughs> and I, like, I was so hurt, but also kind of respected that person for being like that creative with how mean they yeah. were. Where that one was like, I don't even know how to feel about it now because it's like kind of a good joke. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, that's heartbreaking. I mean... Yeah, it's kind of a funny joke. Yeah, it's funny. Yeah. It's funny but it's I, I was hoping me. that I think the joke would have been better if you said if you took some of the fat off, not not to not to make the burn worse, <laughs> but I was hoping that the joke was if you took some of the fat off Eddie and put it on the other guy, you would have had two fat people. So like, that, <laughs> oh, would, that would have that, that would have like actually really hurt me. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to uh, bad bully jokes. Uh, <laughs> That's a good one, though. That's really mean. What about you? Oh, dude, I had one. I think I think I told this a long time ago, but nobody probably heard it. Heard it. I still feel bad about it. Um, it was years ago, and I had this little series on my channel called The Working Man Series, and I wanted to do, like, <clears throat> for the finale of it, it was back when I had, like, maybe, like, 20, 30,000 subs or something. For the finale of it, I wanted to, like, in my Wisconsin hometown, like, say, hey, anyone that wants to come, show up on this date, and we'll go, and we'll shoot in the field, and everyone will show up, and then we'll go out to dinner or whatever. I was like, so send in your RSVPs, shoot me an email, like, if you're going to be there. I, that, I did that hmm. uh, a couple weeks later I used to like put out original music every Friday where it's like it totally fucked with the channel's algorithm because like memes mm. memes memes here's a really good love song you know like oh, okay. it's stupid mm. to do that um, but I put out a song I wrote on music Friday and one guy came along and he wrote it was like a four paragraph thing and the thing is it was 
perfectly spelled, articulate, and it was just saying like, hey, I'm just gonna tell you this now, like, this is so bad. Like, you just need to stop. You have no business oh. doing it. And it was each paragraph was its own thing. Like, oh. just the tonality of your voice. You sound like a whiny baby. Like, oh my god, god. Was, like poisonous directed comment like, yeah. ever. And, and it was like so intelligently oh. written so that you couldn't like write it off as I some know. dumb yeah. kid. I was like, damn it, I, this kid could be like 15 for all I know, but he can spell well. So God, it got me. So foolishly, I responded to him, and I was just fucking mean. Like I was just oh. like. Obviously, you're here because I'm a really small channel, so you're clearly here because, like, you liked what I did. Well, just know this. No matter where you go for the rest of your life, I don't like you. Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> this is fucking awful. That's a, that's a Midwestern it's bird terrible. right there. I'm just like, I don't care where you are. I don't care what you do. Just know that I don't like you. <laughs> at least, I mean, at least that's still, like, comedic. But you no. know what I mean? Dude. Like there was some, there was just some really butthurt comments that we left on people where we were just like, no, yeah, no, mm. shut up, yeah. <laughs> dude. But the worst part is the next video I put out, the same guy came back and he was trying to be nice. He's just like, hey man, like this video, and I had the chance to take yeah, the high ground. Story. But I came and was like, I thought I told you to get the hell out. <laughs> <of here." laughs> so so I I fuck and I didn't see him comment again. Anyway, a couple of weeks go by and I was counting up the email RSVPs for the for like the maybe couple dozen people that were coming, you know. And this guy had emailed me when the video came out and he was like, "Hey Gus, just wanted to say I'm still in high school." Um, I my pa- family doesn't have a lot of money, but I convinced my parents to let me drive seven hours. Oh. Me and my little brother have been saving up this month to afford the gas to come to your working man shoot. I can't wait to meet you, man. And I was like, oh. <laughs> Did you say yes? I res- I sent him like a huge email. I was like, he said, I- you and your little brother, <laughs> get the fuck <laughs> out of here. I can don't come, like but you. I won't talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell your little brother I don't like you. <laughs> <laughs> but I was just like, I sent him a huge message, and I was just like, I just want to apologize. That was incredibly inappropriate to me. I said, I hope you understand why I would say that, but I, I was so wrong. I said, please yeah. show up. No hard feelings. I never heard from him. He didn't show up. Ooh. I feel fucking bad about that one. Sorry, boys, Ooh. if you're still out there. <laughs> no, I fucked up on that one. <laughs> Maybe it was all like a head game. He was like, yeah, that's right. You apologize to me. <laughs> you never intended on coming. It's funny. I mean, a lot, of those, a lot of those comments, especially the ones that are like so huge, they're people that they are, they do enjoy your, your content. Sometimes they just say really vile stuff because they're like ah he's not gonna read it because like I've, I've seen stuff like i don't respond to the negative stuff but my girlfriend does mm-hmm. with, with her stuff like she'll respond mm-hmm. but always in a positive way she's like oh like i'm like she, she like her whole her whole thing is killing with kindness yeah so and and like 80 percent of the time that people respond they're like they're like i'm so sorry i didn't mean it that way like i think you're just really great and blah 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 when like the comment they left was like fuck this video you suck like <laughs> mm-hmm. blah 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 and it's like wait what yeah it's like a complete 180 and it's just i think some pe- sometimes people just want the attention yeah that, that's I don't so think true they really like always mean what they're saying it's so weird that that exact kind of scenario happens so much with so many people though cuz like every youtube person that i know that has done that kill them with kindness thing pretty much every time they come back with that exact response like ah oh, i didn't think you would see this i'm such a big fan and it's just weird that so many people would do that mm-hmm. yeah I hate that. It's always, I didn't think you would see this. Like, like oh. Then why did you write yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> Just thinking my thoughts out loud. I hate that stupid shit. But then, like, do they actually feel that way? Are they just trying to be nice because now they realize that the person responded to it and saw it? Like, I just don't know. I think, yeah, sometimes it is an attention thing, but sometimes it's like they don't expect anyone to read it or maybe they just want to argue with other people in the comments about it just so somebody will be talking to them maybe it's just a cathartic thing like they're just writing out into the void Mm. and then when somebody calls them out they're like oh god oh no like you know like and i think there's a lot of there's a lot of emotions and feelings behind you know these comments because i think a lot of these people are fans of the content so when they see something that they that they feel like isn't the content that they are used to, mm. they feel very attacked and offended because like, how dare you mess with my content? Yeah. yeah. And then when you call them out, they're like, oh, oh, that's right. I'm actually like, I actually normally enjoy this person's work. Mm. Yeah. So I don't understand that mentality though. <clears throat> 
but that, these things happen. I, you know. say something? I was just going to say, that's one of the things I learned just even watching other people is that sometimes when people try new things, like on YouTube, people are not open to new stuff a lot. Mm-hmm. And like before, when I started getting a small following, I was making like uh, comedy short film type stuff. And then I started doing commentary on the side because I really wanted to do it. And I got a lot of comments saying like, don't do this, well, like blah, blah, blah. It's like yeah. way worse than your other stuff. And that's what blew up my channel. Yeah. And the same thing with Nakey Jakey is he tried the green screen stuff. I didn't comment anything, but I watched his stuff before I knew him. And I was like, this is a bad move. I don't know why he's doing this. And then he put did the exercise ball thing. And it's incredible. Yeah. Like it's the best. It's what sets him apart from other people. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know. It's just with fans on the internet, like, they should be more open to change for stuff because it can be good. It can work out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I think it just comes down to being confident that you're making the right move for yourself. Mm. Like you, you did the commentary cause that's what you wanted to do and you were passionate about it and you saw those comments. You're like, fuck you. I like doing this. Yeah. And, and you, you proved that that was, you know, that was the way to go. And mm. you know, if you just kept doing what you, what you thought the, the viewers wanted, then, you know, you, you, I mean, it might also just get old and people would stop watching, but also you would just feel like crap because it's yeah. not something that you want to do anymore. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, which is something interesting when you, when you follow a YouTube channel for many years and you see like the people, the people that generally tend to make the same kind of content, like some of those people, they get burnt out. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it's just because they're they're so focused on like what the viewers are saying in the comments. And it's like the comments don't they matter a little bit, mm. but they don't really speak to the entire audience. Yeah, mm-hmm. they speak to an angry audience. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know. You just you just got to trust. You just got to trust in your own work. Mm. You know, that's true. As much as like I don't like to say it is like what. <laughs> what we all do is is art and with art you you can't you can't do what other people want you to do you mm-hmm. have to do you mm-hmm. so whether you know whether you think whether or not you think it's art are dumb jokes and whatever it's uh, that's what it is yeah there's a thought process behind it and it's it's unique to everybody too um i i had a question i was going to ask you too um who are like some people uh, earlier YouTube that like you watched um, when you were starting off creating yourself? Like who did you enjoy? And then like, I mean, if you want to share too, like who isn't really doing it anymore that you kind of miss and want to see what they're up to? Uh, I mean, when we started like Lonely Island was awesome. And oh, then yeah. mm-hmm. and then they, they moved on to bigger and better things. Uh, uh, Dare Comedy, that's another one. Um, oh, that's where Gambino got to start, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Donald that. Glover. I mean, that, that's so nuts. Because, I mean, he, the other two guys were awesome, but he, like, really stood out. Like, that dude has so much talent. And you can see it from those sketches. Like, he just has this energy. Mm. And then he got, he got picked up for, uh, he wrote for 30 Rock. And then he went on to Community. Mm-hmm. And then he did Childish Gambino. And then he did well. Oh yeah, and then he did Mystery Team way before that. Mystery then, Team. Yeah, what movie is that? They made Derek Comedy. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, you should watch it. It's oh. really funny. Did, weren't you telling me that he was writing for Thirty Rock when he was like eighteen too? I think he was. Well, I knew he was young. I think he was um, around early our age. 20s. Yeah, I think Damn, I dude. think he, it was early twenties. Um, but also, uh, he also did a stand-up special that I still think is great. Is Weirdo right? Is the yeah, name of it? Like yeah. yeah, that was in the middle of uh, moving on from Community too, yeah. and it's just like. I just don't get how he does it all like yeah. that. I mean, I know it's played out kind of on the internet to talk about it, but it's like, man, he really does everything. It's really true good. though. Like yeah. <laughs> he's like, he's he's a, a star. Like mm. he's he doesn't operate like a normal human. Like you shouldn't be that talented. It's not fair. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's I I'm I'm so like we're we're so we're so fortunate to have somebody like that because he's. He's, I mean, Atlanta is super good. Mm, oh, too. I love Atlanta so much. And just like hearing, like, I think there was something that happened with like the first season, like the uh, the network like hired a bunch of writers and stuff, and he basically fired all of them and was like, "No, you're going to use these people." Really? Yeah. Mm. One of which and I it, think is his brother, right? Doesn't his brother write for the show? Ronald oh, I Glover? Know, maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think yeah. his brother does. Done, boys. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, yeah, I, I don't know, but uh, 
but the show's so good. And I think I think also that he might have lied to the studio about what kind of show it was. Mm. Like I think he might have told them that it was like just a straight up like sitcom or a comedy, mm. and it turns out to be like not that. Yeah, like it has comedy in it, but it's something very different. Um, but I don't even know how we got on this yeah. topic. Oh, of, early YouTube people. Oh, right. oh you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Stuff. Bo Burnham, obviously, mm-hmm. he's amazing. But you know, that's another person. Like he's a he's a straight up artist. Like he had the opportunity to just do the YouTube thing for as long as he wanted to. Um, and he's like, no, I, I, I don't want to do this. I want to do stand up. I want to do, you know, bigger things. And I got so much respect for that guy. Cause he, like he had, he was comfortable enough to be like, okay, I'm going to leave everything for three years and work on a comedy special. Mm. And then he did that. And then he left for another three years and then came out with another comedy special. And every single one that he's put out has been better than the last, mm-hmm. in, my, in my opinion. Uh, that's so nuts, though. Like, that's so risky. You can't just do yeah. that. Especially I now. I don't like, upload for two weeks. I'm like, oh, I'm <laughs> fucking dead now. <laughs> yeah. Well, and he, was, and he was talking about that. I, I heard him on some podcast where he was saying, like, you know, we're so used to, like, with Twitter and Vine and stuff, we're so used to the moment you think of a joke, it's like, I got to put it out there. Got to put it out there. Like, mm. you can't just, like, you can't let it sit. Like, you just have to put it out as quickly as possible. And you might be putting out a joke that's only half formed. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's just the, that's the world that we live in. Mm-hmm. Um, but he wanted to step back and say that, you know, there's value in working on something for a long time. Uh, obviously, he's also just massively talented. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> not everybody can step away for three years and come out with gold. Yeah. Uh, but he can. I could step away for three years. <laughs> I wouldn't come back with anything, but I yeah. <laughs> just leave for a while. Like, well, three years went by, got nothing. <laughs> nothing, dude. I was just eating cornflakes <laughs> <laughs> daily. Also, eighth grade is really good. Yeah, it's I like it. fucking good. It's so good. Uh, if you guys out there haven't seen eighth grade, find a way to watch it and watch it. We're it's getting really a lot good. of plugs for other people's work. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's what we do. Got got to support. Yeah, gotta support fellow creators. We were saying Eddie and I are big fans of the old Good Neighbor stuff clips with like Kyle yeah. Mooney oh, and yeah, Beck Bennett and shit. Like, yeah. I was so happy to know too. Totally drawing a blank on his name, Dave Mick something. He, the other dude in the group, like, because mm-hmm. you see like Kyle and Beck are on SNL right now. I was like, oh, what about Dave? Like, he was there too. Like, he works for Fox, he, right? He works on SNL. Like, he, I, as far as I know, according to the Wikipedia page, I got a fucking computer. Yeah, in front I think of me. the three of them got hired on. But uh, he's he's just a writer, I think. Not yeah. just a writer. Mm. He, he is a yeah, writer. Yeah. <laughs> I think he's in charge of all the digital short shit over there. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, which is cool. How how cool is that? Like your whole friend group gets hired onto like fucking SNL. I mean, that's yeah. kind of what happened with Lonely Island. Yeah, yeah that's w- great. Which is cool because it was like not even hey guys do something on SNL that you weren't doing. It was kind of just like keep it up, just keep yeah. going. Yeah, I mean, in a way they. I mean, I won't say they saved SNL, but but there weren't the SNL digital shorts before them. Yeah. Like, they created that with Lazy Sunday, which mm-hmm. then kicked off a whole, like, new life to SNL. So, yep, got to yeah. give it to Lonely Island. That's true. SNL's made some good calls on, like, bringing people over, like, in the last 15 years or so. Just mm-hmm. aqua hire kind of shit. But yeah, I also don't think they pay them very well. Yeah, I don't know. Like, you think going on SNL would be, like, this big, like, like you think that, like, oh, I'm on SNL. Like, i got to be making, like, all this money. <laughs> or, you know, I'm going to be this big sort yeah. of person. Mm. And yeah, I don't think they get paid very well. It's so weird, too, because it's, like, I, I mean, if you get, like, a big break and you're in a movie or something, I'd still, like, super, like, slim chances that you'd become, like, a star. But mm. even a cast member on SNL could coincidentally, you know, maybe they're lucky to end up in a f- couple funny sketches and they become an audience favorite. Like, you could become a superstar in, like, a couple months just being mm. on that, like, excuse me. You have to get, like, one really good character. Mm-hmm. Um, but then also you could... If you, because I think the way that a lot of the ways that Saturday Night Live works is like if you're not pitching stuff, if those actors aren't pitching stuff, then they don't end up in any of the sketches. Oh, yeah. I yeah. Suppose. So, if you're not friends with anybody in the show, you kind of get shunned with it. That would stress yeah. me out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like it's, I, I, from what I know, <laughs> from what I Googled over here, um, <laughs> like it just seems so competitive. Like even yeah. you, nothing secured, you couldn't have a job next month, maybe. I mean, because it, it has to be. It's such a competitive environment to be on, but like to be in, but also 
also collaborating with those people, I think is really weird where it's like, not only are you with a bunch of people who want to be the funniest one on SNL, but now you have to like make sure you're getting on. And that might mean making sure other people don't get on, you know, which is yeah. really rough. Yeah. Yeah. I got a question for you. Um, do you have like any, like if you just, if you had no responsibilities right now and all resources at your availability, like what is like a dream kind of project that you'd want to put together? Uh, you had a full year off. Boom. Boom. That's it? Um, I would uh, create an island in... The sun? I would create an island right next to Hawaii and call it Hawaii 2. <laughs> the squeakle. And it would be... The squeakle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the squeakle. And then I'd chipwreck a, a ship. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And I make it half the price of of everything on Hawaii. Yeah, that's there pretty you go. good. <laughs> I love the ver the adverb. I would just I would chip wreck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I just all the advertisements would be Hawaii two half the price of Hawaii one. Damn, that's a g I'd go to Hawaii too. Hawaii two. It's half yeah. the price of Hawaii one. <laughs> yeah. Can't Can imagine how that? fucking expensive it'd be at Hawaii five zero though, dude. That's like yeah, fun. that's I'm done. I'm that's done. Uh, <laughs> that's a later stage. That's Damn. later stage. That's further in development. Hawaii yeah. two five zero. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, because it would be Hawaii two. It has to yeah. be on Hawaii too. <laughs> yeah. It's on like just some like side network, the sci-fi like, channel. <laughs> we want to catch these criminals, but first let's buy some coffee. It's half price. <laughs> half price. <laughs> Back in Hawaii. <laughs> Didn't they just reboot that show, Hawaii Five O? So, yeah. yeah. Or was it, was it Magnum PI? Oh, it's Magnum PI. Yeah, yeah Hawaii yeah. Five O was a few years ago. Mm. Why are they doing that? I don't, they do because old those. people, that's why. Dude, yeah. who is network TV? Like, what is going on there? Like, w are people still watching that? It's all, I feel yeah. like just looking in, knowing nothing about it, just like crime shows. Well, I mean, yeah, but it's, it's, it's a lot of older people. So mm -hmm. those people that grew up watching Hawaii Five-O and Magnum PI and Mac MacGyver, like mm -hmm. now, now like networks are like, oh, we have to make shows for them. I mean, we already made this show before. Why not just do it over again? Yeah. Let them re It's like when all those car commercials like use Rolling Stones songs. They're just tapping into that nostalgia. Mm. I can see that. I feel like I don't. I like if I'll just look in at it like a network cop show. It'll be like starring, and I don't recognize any of the top build names. Just wow. like I don't know who that person is. I've never seen them anywhere else. Yeah. It's like the step below that is like I feel like lifetime movies and stuff like I just don't recognize anybody yeah um, Sven actually my brother had a good quote where he's like the rule about getting on lifetime movies is you need to sign a contract saying that you promise to never go any higher than lifetime <laughs> movies. you can't go Ooh, anywhere so else <laughs> it's yeah. kind of mean yeah but I think what it is is that people who are older watching network shows is the shows that were made when they were younger were less episodic and it was more just like return to see the characters we'll have like a new storyline and that's yeah. most TV shows like yeah, Star procedural. Trek all the cop yeah. yeah so like we I think were more used to when we were growing up of more, uh, like you know episodic stuff so that's why I just I think it's just a taste thing of like what they grew up on mm -hmm. so like I watch it and I'm like but where is this going yeah but you know nowhere yeah we grew up on stuff where it was going somewhere usually yeah not saying that's like superior in any way just because i like it more but yeah it's more compelling certainly yeah it's, I think it's, so. it is less fitting for a passive viewing experience you cannot be like yeah. oh, i'm just tuning in fucking leave it to beaver mm -hmm. there's gonna be some shenanigans i guarantee it yeah, yeah, yeah. those beavers i haven't seen the show I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> all those fucking beavers, those fucking <laughs> beavers. <laughs> but that's what i do with like always sunny I mean, I mean, it's weird that like The Office, I watch like Always Sunny, but that's actually it has like more storylines. But what yeah. I like about Sunny is that it doesn't really go anywhere. Mm -hmm. That's no, what I love not about really. the show. Like they're they're always terrible people. Yeah, yeah. you always come back. They're always they're, are they still terrible? Yep. Yeah. All right, great. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, yeah, I was I was reading something the other day about how like TV networks are having to completely like rethink the way they do shows because normally they marketed shows for 18 to 48 year old people because mm. those are the people that were buying things so they were easier able to sell like they would want to make shows for that so that the advertisers would sell on their shows uh but now those aren't the people that are watching television mm. so now they're having to like rethink like oh okay so we do need to make more shows like ncis 
like where it's like mm. older people are going to watch it and I don't know, we'll just have to sell them Metamucil or something, you know, like, yeah, <laughs> it's just, it's just a total like rethink, uh, because you can't, you can't make television shows for young people anymore because young people aren't watching, um, you know, cable television. They're watching, yeah. they'll watch Netflix or HBO, but like, how, what, like, What's on? What I mean, like, unless you're watching reality television, I don't. Yeah, dude, that's so true. It's almost like a vicious circle, I would assume too, with um, because it's like, oh, older people are kind of starting to watch our thing. Well, let's put fucking ads for, like you said, Metamucil. So then it's like, not only are the shows not good, but you don't want to see like fucking Allegra ads and yeah. shit. Like Activia, Jamie Lee Curtis comes back. Boom. <laughs> hey, still shitting. <laughs> Thanks, Activia. <laughs> I haven't stopped since Freaky Friday. <laughs> I was reading those comments on the internet. You were saying, Jamie, you shitting still? <laughs> you shitting I'm still? I'm shitting. <laughs> still in there, boys. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, well, just really quick. When you, so you do watch Sunny, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we were talking about the Groundlings uh, before. I, Jamie and I went a couple days ago, and they had like their featured actor for their fully improv show. Was I can't remember his name. It's the dude that plays Uncle Jack. That's the guy that's self conscious about his hands. The lawyer. Oh yeah, he yeah, yeah. fucking killed it, dude. He yeah. was so goddamn funny. Um, the girl that plays uh, Flo in the Progressive commercials was there too. Yeah, she was clearly the funniest of everybody. It's like her show, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, dude, it's nuts. It's and and too, like, I mean, I've never been a huge fan of the Flow Progressive ones. I think they're it's a I great, am ag- huge fan. <laughs> oh my god, dude, season four, biggest fan Boom. of Flow, right here. <laughs> yeah, but it's like I was never a fan. I acknowledge how good the ad campaign is, but like, god damn, she's so good. Mm-hmm. Um, what are you watching right now? Movies, TV shows, and stuff. Uh, I'm I'm making my way through Anthony Bourdain's Parts Unknown. Mm. Uh. Cause I, I watched like, I watched like one or two episodes before he died. And I was like, that's a weird show, but I kind of like it. And then he died and I was like, all right, I'll check it out again. And it's so good. Mm. It's so good. And I, I'm, I, I like food. Mm. Uh, and I like, I like seeing like other cultures and like places that I've never like heard of. And it's just such a cool, he's such a, like a, a cool brain and it was a really cool show. Uh, highly recommend it. It's on yeah. Netflix. You could stream all the episodes. Damn, dude, we're not getting paid for that. Don't, <laughs> don't say but that. <laughs> you find it anywhere, just Google it. But I heard they're cutting. Uh, I guess the, I guess the new seasons coming out right now on TV, and they've cut. Uh, I don't know how you say her name. Asia or Asia Argento, because that was his oh, girlfriend. Right, the whole they, oh, right. They're yeah. cutting her like out of the show. Like they're just like, like Oof. editing her out. Oh shit! Yeah, just CGIing someone over her. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like not not a uh, rapey woman. Yeah. Um, God damn. Yeah, that was weird. <laughs> and I watched I watched Marie Antoinette the other the other night. The cr- uh, uh, Kristen uh, Dunst. Remember? Yeah, <laughs> Kristen. Kristen. I've never seen it before. Uh, and and she's in that movie. I was like, ooh, <laughs> <laughs> weird. Yeah. She wasn't. She wasn't sleeping with any small boys, though. So thank God. <laughs> yeah, that would have been really weird. Yeah, lots of plot twists in that <laughs> one. Do you ever um, find yourself trying like new shows or music or getting into stuff like after somebody dies? Mm-hmm. Like, because for me, I did that with Trailer Park Boys after John Dunsworth died. The guy that plays Jim Leahy. Mm-hmm. Um, there was just an, an outpouring of Reddit love, and I was like, well, maybe I'll look into this, and then I fucking love it. Same thing with after Lil Peep died. I didn't think I would ever like that kind of music. <sighs> I checked it out and was like, well, I fucking love this now. But like, yeah. you ever found yourself doing that before? I think this is the first time. Uh, yeah, because I, I just kind of wrote it off because I think I watched a weird episode and I was like, all right, like it's all right, but I'm not. I got better stuff to watch. And then he died, and I was like, "All right, I'll give it another. I'll give it another look." It is kind of weird. I think it's probably it's probably less heartbreaking to to fall in love with something, you know, after rather than be totally into it and then be like, "Wow, all right, I guess it's over." Sad. Yeah. Mm. Uh, but yeah, I don't. I don't know about anything else. I don't. I guess I just don't really follow a lot of a lot of like people and things that. It's never celebrity death has never really like hit me. Mm-hmm. I think the Anthony Bourdain one was nuts though, but I think I don't know. I think I think you know when when that happened. Not that obviously not that it's good, uh, but it do, it is very helpful for people like myself who have never had clinical depression 
to see somebody that, you know, in every respect, they had everything that they could have wanted. Like they had a job that took them all around the world and eating all this amazing food. And he seemed like he loved life so much Mm. and stuff. And, and then to see somebody like that, take their lives, you're like, Whoa, okay. So like he had everything, right? Mm -hmm. He had a dream job and still, still he felt like doing that. So that's, I think that's important for people like myself who don't have that kind of perspective Mm. to realize like, you know, how big of a problem it is. It's not just, it's not just, you know, cause a lot of people, and I think especially a couple of years ago when, when like suicide awareness wasn't as big of a thing in social media, a lot of times like somebody would, somebody would die and they'd be like, they'd be like, uh, or somebody would say they're depressed and they're like, well then you just gotta, you just gotta, you know, lift yourself up. Stop being sad. Mm. Just smile. <laughs> just, just like, smile. Just like, I don't know, stop being such a pussy. Yeah. And to see something like that, I think gives like a really good perspective uh, because I don't, I don't personally experience it. So yeah. No, that's a really good point. Yeah. I think uh, Bourdain did that for celebrity death type stuff. And also Robin Williams was one that was like a yeah, huge, right? just like, holy shit, that's Robin Williams. Like, I would never have expected that ever, too. So, yeah, from that perspective of, like, somebody who doesn't deal with it either, I, like, got to understand it more. And that's what the internet has helped with, except for, like, you know, when you see some of these Twitch streamers doing that exact thing. Like, I've seen two different Twitch streamers be like, if you're depressed, just be happy. It's like, fuck you, dude. God. Yeah. It's like some (laughs) of the luckiest people in the world who are also working some of the most stressful, like, obligations and shit. I don't understand that. Yeah. Yeah. Well then, and then you get those comments that are like they're like uh, that are like the opposite, where it's like you know somebody like Anthony Bourdain passed, and they're like they're like fuck that guy, he had everything, he had a good life. If I had that, I wouldn't be fucking depressed. It's like yeah, ah, yeah. you're kind of missing the point here, yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah, I don't understand that. Why do people <laughs> fucking do that? People just want attention. I think sometimes they also want to just be like contradictory and just go against the grain with that kind of shit. But yeah, a lot of people want to just be edgy. Yeah. For the sake of it. Right. And I think that's the easiest thing for them to do. It's the most low stakes where they don't have to say something like racist or, or like super shitty in the sense of they have to deal with huge consequences. They can just say something super ignorant and people are like, you're dumb. And that's kind of it. They get away with it. Right. Yeah. It's like kind of low stakes, but saying something horrible about somebody else. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I don't know. I just don't know. I just don't know. I don't understand. One thing I like about Anthony Bourdain is like he would just, because I feel like some celebrity chef shit um, is like they get to a certain level and then they're just like, oh, I can't eat stuff. I mean, even Gordon Ramsay, who mm. I fucking love Gordon Ramsay. Like, yeah. You know, Kitchen Nightmares, Hotel Hell. Mm, that's my stuff. <laughs> mm. Um but like he was on Colbert like a few months ago or whatever and like I can't tell if he was just doing full bit mode but he was trying Girl Scout cookies like oh that's dreadful oh it's mm. fucking it's he like, did the same thing with Oreos yeah, on Fallon dude, it's like come it's on like, man it's an Oreo dude yeah <laughs> but I think that's kind of his shtick is yeah. like yeah. shitting on everything yeah mm. But Where still, like, it's like, it's clearly good. Like, even watching Kitchen Nightmares, you can watch it and be like, yeah, that looks pretty bad. I can see how that would taste bad. Yeah. Mm. It always bothered me, too, where it's like, sometimes they'd bring out dishes to him, and it'd be like, I, I'd probably eat that. That looks good. Yeah. And he would just take, like, his forks and, like, fucking pull <laughs> yeah. them. What is this? <laughs> this pizza's breaking. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what are you doing? He'd just, like, push a fork down on, like, burritos, and, like, <laughs> beans would come out. You see these fucking sure, beans? Dude, it's broken. <laughs> it's I like, did break. It, but it's still. Oh. <laughs> you believe when I squeeze this with yeah. my whole hand, it comes out of my knuckles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, I think it was. I think it was like one of the first episodes of Parts Unknown. I, I'm pretty sure it's Parts Unknown. He went to Koreatown in Los Angeles, mm-hmm. and this guy took him to Sizzler, and he was like, and he was like making it like a whole thing, mm. and he wasn't like, ah, oh, this Sizzler is raw. Yeah. You know. Because mm. they, oh, they took Gordon Ramsay or. No, uh, Bourdain. Okay. Like, the, this dude took him to Sizzler because he's like, this is what we did growing up in Koreatown. Like, this is the cool place we all went to when we were yeah. kids. Sizzler. Sizzler. <laughs> it's, yeah, uh, it's happening, boys. <laughs> I love to on Kitchen Nightmares and shit where it's always like the owners are always interviewed beforehand. It's like before they bring the, the food out to them. 
to him and they're always just like yeah i think gordon will really like this <laughs> <laughs> this my pizza's the best everyone said like why are you on the show yeah. <laughs> yeah. like, how much of that do you think is like fed to them or or if they do you think everyone is that delusional though like owners and stuff i or? think i read a comment thread of somebody who worked for one of the uh, one of the restaurants, but wasn't like didn't have steaks in it, and they were like, "Yeah, we kind of just played it up for the cameras because because we people act different on camera." Mm-hmm. Right. So I don't know how much it is, but I know I saw that one thing of somebody. It's like not credible at all. I just yeah. saw this like a week ago, um, and then them just saying like, "Yeah, we played it up." Yeah. So I don't know how how much he has to do with it. I don't know. I'm sure he loves it when owners get mad though. He's like, "This is gonna get the ratings." Yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna scream at this motherfucker. <laughs> Have yep. you ever seen the uh, the Amy's Baking Company? Yeah, yes, yeah. Dude. Holy that's shit! That's like Holy. the greatest. That's like one of the greatest things to grace yeah. our planet. <laughs> do you oh want to explain God. it a little bit for people that don't know Please what it is? Do. Uh, yeah. So the show was was it Restaurant Impossible? No, something? that was Kitchen Nightmares. I think. No, it was that it was was it no because it wasn't Gordon Ramsay. It was that other British dude, that like jacked British guy. Oh wait, what? No, I yeah. think I, I think that one was Gordon. I know who you're was talking it? about. Yeah, that guy's like oh, maybe it was Kitchen Impossible. Yeah, that Amy's was the was, oh, it was Gordon. Gordon Ramsay. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. so it was this <laughs> it was this bakery <laughs> in like Arizona, and this woman, this very delusional, like weird cat lady woman, uh, and and like her older like Persian husband yeah. <laughs> and, and uh, she definitely kind of gave off sort of trophy wife vibes, but uh, she was uh, not, not mentally sound and uh, completely delusional. And the, the moment that like somebody would be like, this food's bad. She's like, no, my food is delicious. My food is delicious and fuck you. And then the, and then the, um, the husband would come out. And he's like, "Get out! Yeah. Get out of my place! Get out! Her food is great." Yeah, yeah. Fuck you. Like that. And like they took the t- they would also take the tips. Yeah, yeah, like all the tips that went to the the um, waiters would go to the owners. And like Gordon Ramsay's like, "Wait, what? Like, no restaurant in the history ever has done that." Yeah. Mm-hmm. I believe that one. Like, I feel like how there you can't make that shit up. Like, that's just fucking bonkers, dude. I don't think somebody would be willing to destroy their reputation that much. I've seen, obviously, you know, in different senses, people do it on reality shows. But that was like, fuck our business. And if they were faking it and fuck every everybody and everybody who thinks anything of me. And that would be like way too big of a sacrifice to be on Kitchen Nightmares, I think. Yeah. yeah. Do, you know what's nuts about this, though, is I, I was reading about uh, specifically Amy's Baking Company. And they actually saw a big surge for years after the episode because mm-hmm. they kind of embraced it and turned the shtick into like, you come here and we will be fucking rude to you. And oh. she's like, fuck you. You don't know what you're talking mm. about. And people come like, oh, I got insulted like on the show. Like, I mean, hey, that's that's America for you. Yeah. I mean, those restaurants great. do exist Good for them. too. Oh, yeah, and like those Chicago cool. where they just yeah. badmouth you. What the fuck is the name of it? Uh, Burger King. No. <laughs> <laughs> I think fuck it's like Ed DeBevix or some shit. Uh, yeah, it was one of them where I remember going to it when I was younger um, in Chicago with my family being like, I don't really want to be a part of this. And they'd be like, what's fucked up, Harry Potter, fucking loser? <laughs> I was like, I just want to have chicken strips, please. <laughs> like, yeah, you would, bitch. <laughs> They're just really bad. Like, hey, y- idiot. I like that there's no, yeah, you would. Like, there's no subject. <laughs> <laughs> fucking chicken What do you wing. mean I would? Oh, God. <laughs> he called me. He, he knew me. <laughs> I, think, I think there was some, I think they made a chain out of it or something because I think there was one. I passed by one in Vegas, and there was just like some like family in there, and I think a lot of those people they walk in there not knowing what it is, mm. and they're like, "Why are they so mean to us?" Yeah, some little Midwestern white touristy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this looks like a good place. <laughs> like life's already hard enough. Like, why do I need some guy to call me an asshole for like an hour? I don't need that. Yeah, that's how he gets his tips. <laughs> yeah, work like that. Unless Amy's his boss. Damn. He's serious when he does that. I don't know if you know. Boom. <laughs> Boom. Oh, that's a good look. Perhaps, <laughs> um, Perhaps a shock of Perhaps a shock of One or two. Die. Um, what's, uh, I wanted to know, how does, how does like your family, I'm sure it's, you've been doing this for a long time now, but like, how does your family respond to like your video stuff? Have they been like super supportive? Do they get intrusive sometimes or like? No, I mean, they, like they, they were always supportive. Mm-hmm. Um, 
you know, at, at the beginning, you know, there was no way to make money on it. So they were just, you know, I was going to community college and my parents saw the videos and they're like, well, good for you. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Keep going to college. Yeah. <laughs> you know? uh, they've never, they've never discouraged me from anything I've done. Uh, um, I don't know. It, they, they, they're, they're pretty supportive. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Our, yeah, I already talked about it in the last episode, but I had to block my mom from my YouTube comments. Oh, did she she'd always comment? fucking come in. She no. go and she'd self identify too, you know. So <sighs> it'd be like she they they still don't like my parents don't like when like when I use foul language in a video. Like they're just they're like really sweet, nice Midwestern folk. Yeah. But my mom would come and be like, Gus's mom here. Personally, I don't approve of Gus using the Effenheimer. <laughs> <She'd be> like, <laughs> mom, I don't know what to tell you, dog. I'm going to block you. <laughs> you can't fucking go in here and do that. No, my parents stay very far away from my content. <laughs> I think it's for the best, regardless of the content that anyone makes. Like, mm. yeah. love and support me, but don't go in that comment section. I don't yeah. know. I've oh. seen I've seen that before. Like, a mom gets involved, and it's like, no, no, you're not making it better, mom. Mm -hmm. How do you um, how do you feel about like YouTube climate as a whole? Do you think that it's better than it was, you know, five ten years ago, or do you think that it's more problematic now? Like, how do you feel about the YouTube culture? Uh, well, I think the problem is there's too many people making videos, mm -hmm. so they should stop. <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> I don't, no, but, like, I don't <laughs> like competition. Yeah. Just, guys, seriously, stop. But I mean, like, really though, like, you know, when when we got started, there was a handful of you know, creators that were looking at it as a potential career. Uh, so there was there was a smaller pool that that YouTube could really sort of like look at and promote. You know, uh, now all the kids that grew up watching our stuff, they're now creating content, and now it, you you know you have hundreds of thousands of people that want to be YouTubers, M millions, I don't know. Mm. Because, I mean, there was a, there was like a study that went out last year and they asked, they asked like a thousand kids what they wanted to do as like a profession. And the number one response was YouTuber. Oof. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's, that's what, that's what kids want to do. Do you because, think that's problematic that that's the main response or like, I mean, I, I don't think it's problematic. I think, I think it's important for YouTubers to be clear about their success and how a lot of it wasn't just because they were the dopest people. <laughs> like <laughs> they didn't just like, you know, they didn't dab the best and then, and then, you know, become famous. Uh, that was a terrible analogy, but, uh, <laughs> That's what I did. Terrible I example. But it Eddie made it like that. Didn't but like I think, that. I think a lot of YouTubers, like they're not, they're not clear about how, lucky they were mm. or you know the slim chance that it was for them to become successful so a lot of kids they just see you know youtuber driving around in a lambo and they're like i could do that i mean like he's just with his friends filming i could do that and i think it's okay to be like i can do that and i think it's i think it's awesome to have like goals and aspirations and dreams like if, if you want to be a YouTuber and you got like a great idea you're passionate about, do it. I mean, that's the awesome thing about YouTube. If you want to make a video, you can. Uh, mm -hmm. But I think it's, you know, it's, it's not as easy as some kids may think it is. Um, and also like, who knows like how to even get out there. You yeah. Know? Like, I don't, I don't know how a 15 year old, get started do you think it's YouTube? harder now than it was like back when youtube got, like the first few years yeah just because of the oversaturation of people doing it or yeah what? for sure for sure damn i think i think if you were if you had talent years years and years ago eventually you would probably bubble up and maybe youtube would see it and then they put it on the front page or whatever uh or go viral or, or something you know it, but now there's just so there's just so much content mm -hmm. that even people with large established uh, viewer bases are getting passed over in the algorithm because YouTube's like, 
oh, well, they watched this other video, so we're just going to show them all of that person's videos. Yeah. It's, it's mm-hmm. very strange. And obviously the algorithm, nobody completely understands it. But YouTube has to have an algorithm like that because they can't, they can't do what they did before. They can't just have like a most viewed page and a most commented page because then just the most popular channels would just continue to be the most popular channels. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or you would end up with channels that would just game the system. Mm-hmm. Uh, which which happened back in the day. There was there's a channel like early YouTube. There's a channel that view botted. I remember that. Yeah. They're called what like the that? they're called the like the Ska Brothers. So like that sounds familiar. Not the Sklar Brothers. The, those guys did some like movie stuff. But the Ska Brothers, they clearly view botted their videos, and and everyone was like, why why are these getting views? They suck. Mm. <laughs> and eventually YouTube caught on and they banned them. Uh, I but, can't even find these guys. Well, right I now. think they just think fully stuff wiped was off, just deleted. Yeah, there's not even any like uh, articles about them. Yeah, but it's then just also music. just like <laughs> Reply Girls. That was like another. That oh, was another right. like phase of YouTube where they they favored videos that were in response to other videos on their like in the related tab. So then people caught on to this and they're like, oh, well, if I respond to a video that was popular. I remember that. I then this will that. get views, especially if my boobies are showing. Uh, so that those. was a that was a problem on YouTube for for a short while. Wouldn't reply videos be like the above suggested yeah. when you reply to it? it? So it'd be like, like the top section. three replies to this video for every video, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. So that's an easy way to get exposure yeah. at the time. Yeah, and it was just it was all garbage. Like it was like I wouldn't have a problem with a reply video if there was some substance to it mm-hmm. but instead it was like they're just like watching or just or they wouldn't even be watching the video they would just say like that was a really funny video and blah 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 it wasn't an actual like commentary yeah you know? think they would have used actual words too that would be yeah. better substance. I know but it <laughs> apparently didn't matter simple just, code yeah. to crack but they didn't get it it was Morse yeah. so I think yeah I don't know it's just it's it's changed but like it had to change mm. it's you know, just there's just too many damn people uploading videos. Yeah, but there's also way more people watching videos too. Mm-hmm. So That's I think true. I think there is there is. It's not equal, but it's almost equal to how it was before, where there was so many creators and so many viewers. Now there's definitely more viewers, but there's definitely more creators. Mm-hmm. I remember uh, just as a viewer before when I first felt the community like really shifting was there was some video on like the trending or most viewed and I saw that the guy had a million subscribers and I had no idea who he was. And that's so normal now. But at the time I was like, what? Like I thought I knew everybody who has more than a million subs. And that was like really when the shift I felt like started going where then it was like people popping up all over the place. How many people have over a million subs on YouTube now? Oh, I'm, I'm sure we can find out. No, but I get that with people that are like five and ten million subs. I'm like, for yeah, some people, yeah. this is an enormous culture. And I'm like, I don't know who this person is at yeah. all. The phase people are always ones that I have no <laughs> idea who any of them are. I yeah. just, Until like two months ago, I didn't know what phase was still. I just uh, had no idea. Yes. Um, I had heard it all the time. But yeah, those guys are huge. Yeah. Like I just saw on Twitter, you know, when you see just uh, people liking uh, like algorithmically something on there, like people you follow liking something. Mm-hmm. It's one of the phase guys hitting 10 million. And I was like, I have no yeah, fucking I don't know who, who this is. guy is. Yeah. Jesus, dude. It, it was, as of April 4th, 2016, there are now over 2,000 YouTube channels with at least 1 million right, subscribers. That was 2016. That. And that was so two fucking years ago. More. Vine has ended since then. So there's <laughs> a lot more. Damn, All those yeah. Viners came over. Yeah. And, yeah. Oh, yeah. That migration. I remember those days. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I remember like the big shock for me was I went to E3 probably like four years ago and, and I ran into this guy and he was like, he was like, Oh, uh, he's a, I think he was a Spanish guy. Uh, he was like, Oh, like I, uh, you know, I watch Smosh and blah, blah, blah. Like I'm a YouTuber too. I was like, Oh, that's awesome, man. We talked for a little bit and then, uh, we went our separate ways and then he he tweeted about it because we took a picture together. He tweeted about it, and uh, and I was like I was like oh cool. So I clicked the photo. I was like oh I want to see like his stuff, and he had nine million subscribers. Oh, holy and shit! And I was like, 
what the fuck is this? Yeah. <laughs> and but that's the thing. He was a, he was a, pretty sure he's Spanish. Uh, El Rubius, who now oh, has no, I don't uh, like thirty million subscribers. Holy Are you shit. serious? Yeah. El Rubius. Jeez. What does he yeah. make? Um, gaming. Okay. So he does gaming. Uh, he's one of like he's like the third most subscribed person now. Oh shit. But uh, I had no idea who he was. But that just speaks to the, like YouTube isn't just America, mm. and there's so many channels outside America that are just enormous because they're speaking to that that audience. Mm. And there's the whole like you know the what is it the T series? Oh yeah, channel the, that's that gonna, from India. It's gonna pass PewDiePie. Yeah, uh, I just saw. I only saw Grande make a meme about it. That's all I saw. Mm. Yeah, it's some like isn't it like an aggregate kind of channel where it's not just one person. It's like a company. For right, like, it's like a Vivo, I think. Oh, no, yeah. That doesn't yeah. count. It doesn't fucking count. <laughs> Pugh's is still on top. T-Series. Dude, El Rubius, yeah, 30 million subs. Holy shit. He, yeah. His uploads, 13 million, 11 yeah. million, 10 million. Oh, my God. Yeah. Wow. And there's, and there's like, Brazilian channels that are enormous that, you know, we've never heard of. Mm. And they're gigantic. Uh, T series sixty one million. Yeah, there's a live video like just counting like PewDiePie versus T series. Their <laughs> sub counts. YouTube really keeps uh, the language sections of YouTube separate, unless I'm guessing if you were like bilingual and watched different videos from. But like, I don't see any videos that aren't in English, right. like mm. ever recommended to me. It's rare that I'll see one on trending and be like, "That's weird that it's on trending on, in the U.S." Yeah, yeah. Um, it's so weird. Smart. Because yeah. they're just going to serve you videos that they, they know you're going to watch. Yeah. Mm. I think YouTube just doesn't like the mixing of cultures. Or <laughs> That's it. <laughs> they're trying to tear us apart. <laughs> we got to get... <laughs> One yeah. <laughs> supplementation time. Oh, yeah, shit. <laughs> Never mind, Tony. Maybe cut the part of it. Uh, one video broke through, though. And What's that's that? Desposito. It's bringing all cultures together. Boom. Yeah, man. <laughs> Saved us all. Susan saw that, and she's like, to the top, boys <laughs> and women and other races. Um, That's true. Despacito, man. Video sure was neato. I don't know. <laughs> you, I didn't know. <laughs> oh, half the other. You proud rhyme. of that one? No. You proud of what you just half said? Half the other fucking rhymes are like foods, like Frito, Cheeto, Dorito. So <laughs> I was like, what doesn't rhyme? That's not a food. That was good. That was good. If you had said a food, I would be even angrier. So I'm glad you went with neato <laughs> instead of Frito. Thank God. Um, <laughs> also, Fuck think it. Daddy Yankee. Is that his name? I don't know. The no, it's not Daddy Yankee. It's some yeah. other dude. Yeah. Is I it Daddy Yankee? I think Daddy it's Yankee's Daddy Yankee's Yankee. Daddy Yankee's one of them. Oh, isn't there three of them? There's Bieber. Well, well Bieber's Bieber, not Bieber, the original. Bieber was, a, was a, like a remix. Whoa. There's a remix of it? Well, it was it's a Bieber, Bieber version. Oh, I Bieber wasn't know in the that. original Despacito. Yeah. It's like a, that's a Despacito no for me, dog. Yeah, what's his face? His manager, Scooter Braun. Great name. Uh, he looked at, I think he like looked at Despacito before it was like massive, massive around the world. And he's like, we should do that. <laughs> Let's do go. that. Yeah. <laughs> Luis but, Fonsi. That's but like, wasn't the name. whole thing like Bieber did the song and he's singing in Spanish and then like he didn't sing it live or something like he couldn't sing it live yeah, because yeah, it was yeah. in Spanish and he didn't know the words in Spanish. Yeah. It's like, Oh yeah. It's funny and awkward to watch, but like people were actually angry at him and it's like, guys, yeah. he doesn't have to learn all of Spanish for mm -hmm. the one song. Like right, that's not right. like when you type in, um, Despa on YouTube, the top three suggestions are Despacito, Despacito two, Despacito. three. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Do you that's think, awesome. do you think at this point they would like, come full circle and like the producers would actually be like i know it's a huge meme let's make despacito too i mean like i don't even think they do it for the meme i think they just do it because it makes financial sense yeah like despacito too because i mean so if great. they come out with another song that doesn't have the word despacito in it we're not gonna like if you saw that you wouldn't click it mm. obviously it's gonna get a lot of a lot of views and yeah. a lot of listeners and everything without us but, I mean, if they release Despacito 2, we're going to watch it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's How, not important unless I watch like it. Like, they just start treating songs like movies. That it's like a trilogy. <laughs> like, oh, well, it did well enough. Let's come out with a sequel. Yeah. I mean, how... That's actually kind of funny. How come they haven't done that? The, they have kind of. Um, With what? <laughs> fucking a couple of years ago, it was Billy Ray Cyrus made a sequel to Achy Breaky Heart. Oh, oh do you remember that no. Achy yeah. Breaky Part Two? Dude, he had <laughs> a line horrible. in that where he referenced 
twerking like Miley. And it's like, that's your fucking daughter, and man. And then one Come time on. he fucking squeals on a guitar and he goes, wrecking ball. <laughs> God <laughs> like, damn. How do you know this so well? Uh, it's just, I, that's what the article says. Sure, sure, uh, sure. Let me just uh, go search something else. All of your history is just <laughs> I refreshing. Will give it. <laughs> it was called Achy Breaky Part 2. Yeah, dude. That's actually kind of clever. That is. like Achy Breaky Heart. A- 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 yeah, all right. That's very clever. Good job, Billy Ray. That's a guy. Way to knows what he's doing. continue to mooch off your daughter. <laughs> That's achy breaky. I am our I am our podcast, Jamie. That's great. <laughs> Jamie, pull hey, that hey, up. Jamie, pull it up. But I'm Jamie. Oh, here's what I love too. It wasn't even on his own Vivo. It was on this like Oof. rapper named Buck Twenty Two. Who's heard of that guy? Like, and it's on his Vivo, and it's called Buck Twenty Two Achy Breaky Two, featuring Billy Ray Cyrus. Oof. Wait, so it's not... It's not even his own thing. Huh. What? You can't make a sequel if it's not... So wait, does you, he just have, like, a featured, yeah, like, but like, verse? But he's most of the shit. It's mostly Billy Ray Cyrus. I don't fucking get that. And it's all these really skimpy, like, Russian aliens with, like, tape. Larry King is in it! <laughs> wait, what? You know it's good when Larry King is in Look doing a cameo. Oh, shit. Who <laughs> fucking signed on to this? Well, what is Larry King doing these days? He hangs he's out. On, he's in fucking Despacito too, dude. <laughs> I want Larry King to do the rap on Despacito too. He's in Conan, <laughs> he's in Conan's Rafters. Do you remember that bit when his show ended? I don't remember that. Conan had it where they actually like set up a desk in the like the rafters of the studio and had Larry King up there, and they're like, yeah, he just does a show above oh, our funny. show most of the time. I would like to point out that Achy Breaky 2, the video is three minutes and 32 seconds long, and the first 36 seconds is Larry King. <laughs> <laughs> so you're telling me to close out of the video at second 36. Oh, my God. Yes. The like-dislike ratio is great. What I know. Is it? Oh, shit. 23,000 likes, 56,000 dislikes. <laughs> Ouch. Maybe pump out part three. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Roll the dice on that Maybe one. you'll <laughs> win them over with, with the third in the trilogy. <laughs> that's, a, that's what you got to do. Um <clears throat> Where the fuck do we go from uh, Achy Breaky Part 2? Yeah, that's that's the hardest one to transition from because I just want to keep talking about it all the time. Yeah, <laughs> that's just it. Don't I break got so heart. much material on Billy Ray Cyrus. <laughs> Specifically, so you can talk yeah. about his mullet that he used to have. Yeah. Oh, um, I had a question because I love hearing answers to this. Mm. Uh, like, Ian, you've been a uh, celebrity for a long time. I, that counts. It counts. It works. <laughs> You okay. got to take it. A celebrity. <laughs> Ooh, Ooh nice. I stole that from Taj Parno, I okay. think. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, thank you for crediting. <laughs> but um, do you have any stories of weird fan interactions that you'd want to share? Because I love hearing those from people. Right. Uh, yeah, we got one. We got one that was really bad. Uh, <clears throat> so the house we used to shoot in was the house that we, that Anthony and I, lived in for for probably about five years Mm. um and we would always shoot at this playground that was around the corner um so people people i guess the name of the park was like in the background in one of the videos so people looked up the name of the park then went on google street view and drove essentially around the neighborhood until they found the house that we that we lived in because we always shot outside as well outside the front of the house mm. even we always made a note to never film street signs nev- and always take off our address whenever we filmed off the front of the house mm. and even then uh somebody went around street view found the house then put the address out online in the comments so God, at that point so it's shady. like you can't even control it now it's just out yeah so <clears throat> We'd have people show up on a regular basis. Oh, my God. And some people from pretty far away. Like, we had this – and it's – and it's a lot of times it's kids. Mm-hmm. And it's – sometimes it's parents driving their kids there. Oh, that's God. so irresponsible. Yeah. Why would you fucking do that? There was a guy that drove – they were from the Bay Area, which is a two-hour drive. Mm-hmm. Drove his kid out there just to meet us oh my god I did he that. know the circumstances of it was your home completely was, oblivious oh. didn't give a shit did you like tell him it's like no because hey, i mean it's just like you're already in the moment like, we were we were coming home so it's not like he's knocking the door we didn't answer we were like we were coming home pulling in a driveway and they're like out there 
And the guy's like, hey, he's he's a big fan. We came all the way from this this city, which I am familiar with. And I was like, oh, cool, man. All right. Post for the photo. Okay, bye. Because I'm not going to berate the the guy in front of his kid. Yeah. yeah. But it's just like you just you just you be cool about it and then and then you know let them let them go because there's no point in berating somebody after they've already shown up Mm -hmm. uh and then yeah some people they would they would come and they would they knock on the door and we would like hide Mm -hmm. because we don't want to publicize it further that we live there and like be on videos where they're like i'm outside their house here they Mm -hmm. are oh yeah uh because I mean, like it's it's our it's our personal lives. It's our we have to have privacy. Like, and it's and while those people are harmless, it only takes one person to be like, well, I know they got video equipment in their house. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, let's steal it. So yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so you know, we we sometimes it did feel like we were prisoners in our own house. Mm. Uh, Cause some people, they would come knock on the door. We wouldn't answer. And then they would just hang outside. Oh, oh fucking hell. Just like hang out on the lawn. That's a no win. Cause what are you like? You can stay there forever or just tell them to go away or yeah. call the cops. Like nobody fucking. Yeah. Wins. So we yeah. always just, we would just hang out and like kind of peek and be like, that's eh, still there. All right. We won't go outside. Oh man. That yeah. sucks. So, yeah, so that was like that was like the bad thing. So then somebody somebody then in the middle of the night snuck in through the side of the house. They went in through like the side gate and took a picture of Anthony through his window. Oh my oh. god. And they posted it. And he luckily he wasn't like naked or jerking it. Mm. Uh he was just playing his DS on the bed. <laughs> That's perhaps more incriminating. Yeah. 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 <laughs> he was awake when they took it and didn't notice they took it. Yeah. Cuz that would really Dude, creep me out. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. oh my god. Yeah. So uh So yeah, after that I went out and bought a gun. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Cuz it's like it's like look, I like most people are completely harmless, completely harmless. They just, they just want to say hi They They enjoy the content. I understand that. And a lot of people don't understand boundaries. They don't understand what they're doing is wrong, mm-hmm. but it, it takes one person. And, and I don't, I don't advise everyone just go out and buy guns cause that's bad. <laughs> Can we put but, that on a shirt? Yeah. <laughs> hey, go out and buy a gun, you pussy. <laughs> uh, but I, you know, I, I felt like I felt like my life could be in danger, so I might as well protect myself. Some people would argue, well, you have what if the what if that person gets the gun? Yeah, that's that's a possibility too. That would suck. But I weighed I weighed my options and I decided that that was that was the way to go. Um, and then. The the thing with uh, Meg Turney and God, and mm. um, Gavin, yeah. yeah, like then then that happened. I was like, yeah, mm-hmm. it's crazy. No, that's so, so shitty. So yeah, that so now I'm like very protective about everything. We don't shoot at my house. I don't post anything relating to the geography about where I live. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, unrelated, Tony, you could probably take the address off the screen at this point. It seems like that probably yeah. is not going to fly. My next question <laughs> yeah. also is, um, what is your address, Ian? <laughs> right uh, into the mic, dude. <laughs> let's see. I got to see what your address here is. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, the, the Playboy Mansion. <laughs> Boom. That's where That's we are. Like, the secret's out, guys. <laughs> not now, Hugh. Or wait, is he dead? Yeah. 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 Sorry, <laughs> sorry, I didn't He's know. a little dead. Not now, yes. not ever <laughs> again. <laughs> just, my bad fella. Just a little dead. My bad fella. Um, <laughs> <just a> horrible thing. <laughs> like the kid and his dad is just waiting there. You guys like fucking squeal up and pop out, start blasting. <laughs> <laughs> no questions <laughs> asked. Just don't say a word. Just like, shh, shh. <laughs> You're about to get smashed. <laughs> <laughs> oh. God damn. Yikes. Um, how like how long was that? Where like from the address getting released? Was it until you moved out that people still kept yeah. showing up? Mm. Yeah, because I because we I mean we felt that if we said anything about it online, then that would just encourage more people. They probably like, like, would. Oh, yeah. the address is out. Well, then in that case, yeah. you know. So we just didn't say anything about it. Uh, we didn't berate anybody for coming. 
uh, I will say that the upside of it was uh, one person uh, went to TP our house, and uh, I guess we were leaving the house like right when they started doing it, and they left a giant bag of toilet paper. Mm-hmm. So we were set on toilet paper <laughs> for like a good couple months. So. <laughs> That was good. It made it all worth it. I mean, wow. mostly, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what a gift. And it was actually like good quality toilet paper. They didn't even buy that one ply. They, they got that For two ply. For teeping a house? That's crazy. Though. Yeah. Man, really why would you amateurs. throw that away? <laughs> amateurs. Some fucking Charmin in here, fellas. Right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Dude, that's nuts, though. Yeah. So I, I have we haven't had any like crazy, crazy experiences after that. We, he moved out, then I moved out, and then it was, then it was fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. How stuff like VidCon, like... Is that pretty manageable for the most part? Like, what's at this point? You've probably gone to like what most, if not every VidCon, every right? single or, one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Should get like a merit badges, like little I Girl should. Scout things. Yeah, Green Brothers, hit me up. Yeah, <laughs> give me a badge. What is what is your VidCon kind of stuff look like now? Do you, is it easier to manage? Um, just because yeah. you've done it so many times, or what? VidCon, uh, they handle it really well now. Mm. Back in the day, well, like the first couple of VidCons, it was like super chill. But there, there weren't a lot of people there. So there was like maybe 1,000 or 2,000 people that, that came to the first two VidCons. So we would just hang out in the lobby and just talk with people. Mm. Like we would just be hanging out in the, in the hotel lobby and like a viewer would come up and we would talk and it would be super chill. And then like VidCon year three hit, like they moved it to Anaheim. And then that's when it started getting a little sketchy because you would have to go from the hotel through the, like the main room to your events and to your signings and stuff. Ooh. And in between you and that is a couple thousand people who may or may not watch your content. Mm. But if you get 10 people that are really, really like your stuff and that may scream when they see you, yeah. That's all it takes to begin a mob because 10 people scream and start running. Then other people are like, what, what's going on? What? Oh, oh, a YouTuber? And then they start running. Mm. Then, then it very quickly turns into a zombie apocalypse mob of people. Yeah. And it was scary for like a couple of years because they didn't really have a good system to get people from the hotel to the events. So it'd be like, then they added like security. So like there'd be a guy in front of you, a guy behind you, and you just kind of quickly walk. Mm. Um, but then as the years went on, then they started adding things where it was like you get in this car and then they drive you around to the back uh, to avoid, you know, people getting trampled. Because like, it was it was it was a safety hazard for the YouTuber and, and just the people because kids were running like crazy. Uh, and uh, and then plus like the hotel, like fans would stay in the hotel, too. Mm hmm. And then they would just ride the elevators up and down until oh, like a YouTuber got dude. into the elevator. So the elevators would be packed with people and then it would back up because there'd just be like 15 girls or maybe like 10 girls, like just like packed into the elevator, just like riding up and down. You're like, what, what floor are you going to? Like, <laughs> like you going to a floor? Yeah. Oh, All right, God. cool. And it's just like, <laughs> eventually like YouTube, they ended up, I mean, um, VidCon ended up getting like a separate hotel that only YouTubers and and talent could stay at. Mm-hmm. That was separate, so they're able to keep those shenanigans from happening. That's good, though. Yeah, so it's like much better managed now. I uh, I give thumbs up to VidCon for the way that they've handled things over the past couple of years. Went a little bit better than TanaCon, just just <laughs> just, just a little bit. <laughs> All I'm bit, saying, a little bit better. <laughs> A percentage less of sunburn. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, God, when the Tanacon thing was announced, I was like, well, this is going to be a shit show. Mm. Yeah. Like, there's there's no doubt about it. And then sure enough, and I enjoyed all the stuff that came out of it. <laughs> that was, that. God, 2018 has been great, guys. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there's been some really great stuff yeah, in 2018. Dude. The resurgence of the time-honored documentary. Yeah. Now making its debut on YouTube. Ken Burns, fuck out of here, dog. <laughs> yeah, right. Get out of here. What do you got on Shane Dawson, Ken Burns? <laughs> Gettysburg, fucking come on. <laughs> Yawn City here, boys. Um, no, that's a good point. Um, do you think that it's, like, more difficult for, like, internet celebrities as opposed to, like, 
I, I mean, I just hate using the word celebrity period, but like, you know, like big internet people as opposed to like traditional media people, because there's maybe that level of accessibility. People like fans might think, oh, I, he's, I saw him in his room on the video. Like he wasn't on a Hollywood set. I think, well, it depends on the person. If they're, if they're crazy, crazy huge, mm-hmm. uh, it might be worse, but... I mean, being being like known on the internet is like such a, it's such like a niche thing. So that, like, you could still, in most circumstances, out in the public, you could still be a normal person. You could still, like, go to Burger King and not be swarmed by people. But if you're Matthew McConaughey or somebody, it doesn't matter where you go. And 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 the the weird like the big difference between being an internet celebrity mm-hmm. and a real celebrity is you recognize that real celebrity and you might not even be a fan of them like but you're still like oh can i get a picture yeah like and mm-hmm. you don't give a you don't care about what they do you're you're just like enamored by them because they're famous but when uh with the people that recognize you for youtube you're not running in the, it's not people that are like i i don't really know what you do but like can i get a picture it's mm-hmm. like it's only people that actively watch your stuff yeah and that are act that are typically usually only fans of the content uh whereas if you're just like a famous person for being in a movie they could have just seen your face on a billboard they have no idea what you do mm-hmm. and they just want a photo like that's and that's true. that's garbage that's, yeah, that's so gotta feel garbage. terrible oh yeah honestly that's, that's worse than getting work. misidentified. You know, like, are yeah. you this person? No, I'm this. But it's yeah. just like, I am going to check you off my list of cool things I saw. Yeah. You know, like, that's so shitty. Give me time of your <laughs> out of your day and pose just because I want to be closer to something that other people know about. That's yeah. basically what we it even, is. We like, even got a tiny taste of that at VidCon just a little bit. Oh, like, there yeah. were a couple, like, people, like, that came up and they were just like, uh, can you sign my shirt? And they're having everyone sign the shit yeah. or whatever. And then I heard, like, one kid was just like, I don't know who they, I don't know who they are, but it's like, just in case, you know, yeah, better so be sure. Stupid. It's like, fuck you, get out of here. Like, I'll, I'll talk with anybody, but don't just, you don't even know who the fuck I am. You yeah, know? Like, yeah. We, we found, we had, we got a taste of that when we went to like a couple like movie premieres mm-hmm. because uh, you kind of like walk down this, this like, this like pathway past a bunch of like fans that are lined up for the movie. And, you know, sometimes there'd be people in that crowd of people that would be like, oh, small show, can I get a picture? Like, okay, yeah, sure. So like lean in. And then there'd be some like 40 year old mom from Wisconsin that's like, oh, can I get a picture too? (laughs) And you're like, all right. And then you're like, and and they're like, yeah, I don't know what you do, but ha 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 ha. Why would they say Uh, that? Like, it's so weird to say to somebody. (laughs) But it's like, it's that gross, like you get a feeling of that grossness. Like it's all, it's, because they do a lot of like premieres down on like Hollywood Boulevard, so it's a lot of it's a lot of tourists that they just they come to Hollywood Boulevard because they want to see a famous person, and and there'd be that thing where they're just be like, oh, can I get a picture? So what do you do? Yeah. All right, cool. Like, all right, got my fi- picture. All right, yeah, cool. that's so see shitty. It. Do you ever get like uh, misidentified as somebody else, like a different YouTuber? <laughs> like, who, do you have a more common one? Uh, no, I've just had people be like. Be like, oh, right on. Like, uh, yeah, I watch your videos all the time. All right, cool. See you later, Anthony. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, yeah, I I've had that before. I was like, I just go with it. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, all right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool, man. Like, yeah. <laughs> get, I've gotten Evan Breen a couple times, LA Turtle. I don't know if like he was. He, I get it. He was yeah. big on like Vine or whatever. Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, um, and then the, my proudest one was one single time. It was when I was definitely slimmer. Someone thought I was I dubs. I don't know why the fuck they thought I didn't the have glasses hair color on or anything. No, no hair color at all. It, I'm sure it was somebody that was just like tangentially was just like, oh, you two be items, you know, just little shit like that. But mm. Weird. No, just, yeah, just weird stuff. But What was the situation of them like coming up to you? It was one of the trips uh, in the last like six months or so, um, and I was just like walking around, and it was just, like just the middle of the day. We were going into a restaurant, and they just, hey, items. All right. I think I didn't even <laughs> correct him. I think it's like took a photo. And they they had no idea that you were a YouTuber. Like, no, yeah, they just missed. Like, <laughs> I'm sure they probably had seen me before, and their brain was like YouTuber oh, was, Idubs. Uh, right. Was this before or after you and Idubs? You were before. In, okay, so before you were in one of his videos, yeah. so they could have uh, just been like identifying you for yeah, the videos. Yeah, so I could see that happening. But weird. 
Um, IDK fellow. <laughs> the premiere thing reminded me. Just, I love. Uh, there was when we went to Buffer Fest last year. There mm-hmm. was like a red carpet thing for everybody, and then there was like some interview stuff. And I'm going this year as uh, an actual person there. But before Gus was invited, and I went with him. Um, but when the people were like interviewing people on the red carpet, it's like. You, we know you don't yeah, give a shit what we have to say. <laughs> Even like the huge people, like they didn't know half to. It's just sort of like, yeah. and then us, what were we doing last year? Like fucking around. Oh, it was, we brought, brought the, uh, you know, those Listerine strips, the like that melt on your tongue. Yeah. We were like packing them onto our tongue and the whole interview, we'd just be like, oh, oh no, no, keep going. Oh, <laughs> we just didn't we're, give a shit. We kept trying to plug Listerine. Like yeah. we're specifically like, um, hey, like. They're like, hey, are you having fun at the festival? Like, yeah, this place is pretty fresh. Not nearly as fresh as Listerine Pocket nice. Box. Yes. Like, now in six available flavors. <laughs> so each person down the line, we'd pop more and more of them. Yeah. That and fucking plug- burns. Yeah, it really hurts. Yeah. <laughs> wow. It's when you know you're clean. We need to do a bit like that this year again. Because I still think that, like, nobody's, nobody there. There are, like, YouTubers that go to that stuff that I'm sure they really care about what, like, the interview is about. Mm-hmm. But still, it's like, okay, I've got this name this person's walking up i don't know what the fuck they do hey how's youtube (laughs) it's like what do you want me to say like it's good that's it it's always the question like do you like doing press like that kind of stuff or i don't i don't think anybody likes i mean it's 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 two minutes of of questions and answers it's you can't get anything really worthwhile out of that yeah like the real god the really dumb ones were um we went to like teen choice awards Oh, couple, I went there a couple years, a couple months ago, yeah. weeks ago. Did you do any of the interviews? No, I was not invited. Our friend is, uh, oh, okay. she announced it. So we were just there oh, to support nice. her, mm. but she did a great job. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah. Cause those are like the most vapid, dumb questions. Like who are you most excited for a teen <laughs> choice awards? <laughs> who do you like? Who do you think is going to win hottest man? <laughs> like, and you're like I, I, I'm not a teen. I don't know. <laughs> But and two have, words, Zach Efron. <laughs> and Beyonce. That's a like person, you right? To, you have to fucking choose from, like, they ask you, like, an adult, uh, like, a legal adult. Who do you think is the hottest nominee? And probably half of them are, like, underage kids. You know? Yeah. I mean, I have oh, a no. little fun with it because you do, like, like you do kind of have to, like, think on your toes and, like, try to find a way to make it fun. Mm-hmm. Because otherwise it's just really bad and mm. and you feel you just feel like a like a like a like a sellout just being like oh i can't wait for zach efron mm. he is my favorite movie star you know yeah. so it's it's it is kind of like a fun little challenge to try to take those bullshit questions and make them entertaining mm. yeah it's a little fun little exercise i guess yeah. Just pop a little Listerine next time. Yeah, I, I, you know, I am going to pop a little Lissy. <laughs> you know? you want to pop some Lissies, bro? <laughs> for those uh, for those questions to people for press stuff, you did uh, the junket stuff a lot, right? Like, not a lot, but, like, yeah, you did. Yeah, I did a little bit. Um, how was that whole experience? Because I've never talked to somebody that, like, has been on that end of, like, junket stuff. Well, I mean, our, <laughs> our movie wasn't big enough to have a lot of people being interested in uh, doing a junket with us, mm. but... Um, <clears throat> It's it's pretty it's pretty terrible because it's it's a lot of the same questions mm. and the interviewers know it's always the same questions and you know it's always the same questions and you both understand it's bullshit um, and for for and also you know it was it was our movie and it's not a large studio movie so. Anybody that did agree to come and interview us was like, yeah, I don't know. Like, I guess my, I've never seen anything you've done. I don't know mm. anything about you. They I don't know anything before? about this movie. No, no. But you can, <laughs> but you can tell from the questions yeah. that they don't care. And they're like, I don't really want to be here. <laughs> I don't care about you. What is a smosh? Per yeah. se? <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, that's the, yeah, that's almost a question that we would get. Jesus. Um, but we do, we have done a lot of, junkets where we interview the celebrities Mm. we do like these little sort of prank videos um and that you kind of get a taste of like like you just feel sorry for them Mm. because you're like you're you're sitting here for multiple days eight hour days with a smile on your face answering the same questions over and over again and i know people at home are going to be like 
yeah, well, they're getting paid millions of dollars, so yeah. they should just just suck it up and do it. It's like, yeah, but it's, it's terrible. Taxing. It's, it's taxing. terrible. Having to be on like that all the time, you know? Yeah. It's like, I don't want to be here, but if I even act a little disinterested, people will be like, fuck that asshole. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's so yeah. shitty. Even one slip up, that could just be a popular video, and they can title it like, you know, Jennifer Lawrence is shitty to the interviewer, and that's yeah. it. Just because she might have like one bad 10-minute <laughs> period yeah. of sad like Affleck. multiple days. Yeah. yeah. Sad. He didn't even have to say anything. He yeah. just looks sad, and then everyone's like, look how fucking sad Ben yeah. Affleck yeah. is. It's like, dude, this guy is like, oh, through eight hours th- of this yeah like, oh that's miserable who who in your experience has been the kindest um like traditional media celebrity that you've uh, that you've encountered or worked with uh, i mean you don't know who's who's like evil being real or who's not yeah uh i can say that they've all been nice well, that's good to hear that i mean it's i mean assuring. yeah yeah i think i I mean, who knows? Because you meet them for like five minutes and you don't really get to know them or anything. Mm-hmm. The Rock was really nice. Jennifer Lawrence was really nice. Oh, wow. I mean, Chris Chris Pratt's fucking awesome, though. I, yeah, he's well, that a was cool recent, guy. Right? That was like a month or so ago. Like. Yeah, we've done two videos of them. Oh, really? And he's like, but he's like, he he's good. Because I feel like he gets he gets prepped for this stuff because he was like, he was like, oh, good to see you again. I was like, you don't. Yeah. There's no. There's no. <laughs> oh, Chris. There's no way that he could have remembered that. Yeah. Like he had to have been prepped. Like I don't believe it. He can't be that good. Yeah. You know what I mean? So some people just are that. He fucking might good, be. Though. Yeah. The thing is, I totally he's got get that, that god power. But yeah, whenever I see him and stuff, I'm like, man, he just seems like he's on it with social interactions with people all the time. He's good, man. He's so good, and he was, cause like we did a. We did a video because one of our one of our castmates, Courtney, is a huge Chris Pratt fan. Chris Pratt fan, mm-hmm. mega Chris Pratt fan. So we surprised her with him, and and he was he was so sweet because we 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 informed him beforehand that she was like a mega fan, and he was so sweet to her, and he's so nice, and he like he followed her on on uh, like Instagram and Twitter mm-hmm. afterwards, oh, and like he like he likes yeah, he's very nice. So I guess I'll just say Chris Pratt. I love hearing shit like that, though. Or especially when it's the people that you would expect, you know? Mm. And then you're like, I fucking knew it. That's yeah. what I want it to be always. Yeah. yeah. Because it's always heartbreaking when you're like, that guy's a dick. Like, mm-hmm. I hate to hear that. Like, he seems so cool. But, yeah, you can yeah. never really trust with, with celebrity stuff like that. Where, like, who who they actually are, obviously. Not that I want need to know or anything like right. that. Right. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. I don't need to know it or anything, but if you go, if any celebrity wants to contact me and just like hang out, then I can just figure out who you are. No. HMU, I suppose. <laughs> Hit us up. Yeah. Uh, Martin Scorsese, if you want to chill, hop in. Direct. Up. Direct an episode. <laughs> Direct an episode <laughs> of the podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's past. what he would say then. He would see everything we're doing and just go, no, 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 no. <laughs> I want to see Scorsese come in and direct on like the Smosh main channel every Scorsese movie ever, and he fucking directs. I would love that. <laughs> if he wants to come and do that, I, I'm not opposed to that idea. Oh, just something invite. tells me he has better stuff to do. I don't. Scorsese I don't know. listens to the podcast. I think he does. Mm-hmm. He's right now. He's here like, Debbie, get in here. <laughs> <laughs> I knew this time would come. The Mike had at 3 a.m. guy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, well, we're just about um, at the end of the show, so... Um, that went by fast. That I did enjoyed go by that. very fast. That was like an hour 40. Oh, mm, shit. Hot diggity damn. Okay, um, some, maybe something else than that, but... Hot diggity darn. Sorry. Mm, Mr. All right, I'll leave it there. Home. I'll leave your it there. Your mom's watching. So. <laughs> just, yeah, <laughs> just trying to protect our 18 to 48-year-old demographic. So, uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, what, uh, do you have anything... What's on your radar now? Plans? Dates? I mean, projects? we're just... We're just Cranking out the usual. Mm-hmm. Uh, still doing sketches on Smosh. I'm tweeting some on Twitter. At Smosh Ian. There you go. Um, Anything else to shout out? No, man. Like we're just we're just uh, we're just making videos. Uh, it's always good having you on having you on our sketches. Um, it's a lot of fun. Thanks. You're for too funny, me. and I'm it's not fair. Funny, but it's like we can't have you on all the time because you're just gonna. You're just gonna take over. I'm so. really glad you didn't just hear the joke. I said it's fucking horrible. <laughs> no, sorry, it's so you know, bad. You said you're too funny, and I, and I panicked and went, "I'm kind of one funny." So, so right, you're never coming back. The, take it, yeah, just that's just, a good nope. move. That's a good. Nope. Right, I, I rescind worried. everything, every good thing that I ever said about you. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh my smosh. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And on that note. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Keep going. Keep going. It's so fucking I'm, bad. I'm, I'm almost there. Keep going. <laughs> Oh, God. Well, thanks for coming on our show. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> on that note, uh, bye. Thanks for fucking coming. Please don't dox us because this is shot in our own home. And you don't have a gun yet. No, we don't. Do you? <laughs> I got pepper spray at, at uh, Quick Trip. But, well, that's um, more for the taste than for the function. Yeah, just a little, oh, okay. Yeah. A little garnish, you know? Nice. You can't cook for a couple hours after when, that. When you run out of Listerine. <laughs> yeah. <you just> <laughs> <laughs> that's, the next Bumper Fest interview is sponsored by Pepper Spray. Oh, just, no brands, just uh, Pepper Spray. Just, uh, you know, if your vision's blurry, just... <laughs> <laughs> ah. I want to see Listerine do a fucking Pepper Spray line. <laughs> it's like, oh, fuck. I smell so good, but... <laughs> <laughs> like, it's uh, sex offenders just smell really nice now. There, <laughs> You can always tag him like, oh, there's a sex offender in there. I smell wintergreen. <laughs> <Oof>. <laughs> Well, yeah, so, yeah, I don't know. Check out the local sex offenders near you. Megan's um, Law. Megan's Law. You can Law. actually do it. There's actually probably one in this building. Yeah, no. Actually, let's look that up afterwards. I'm looking I'm looking at it. <laughs> a special episode where we just look up let's sex do offenders. Let's do it. Here. The, we interview the closest sex offender near you. Oh, just ring on their doorbell. Oh, why'd you do it, guy? <laughs> <laughs> We're holding all the podcast equipment. Hey, why'd you do it? <laughs> <laughs> like, you didn't have to. Didn't have to. Now you're on this website forever. Come on, man. You could have chose to. You could have chosen not to. And you made the wrong decision. Well, I guess he still has a chance of getting on the Predator movie. So The Predator movie? <laughs> yeah. Not Hanson versus Predator? That's They brought it back now. You know they used to do To Catch a Predator? Uh, oh. Now it's on YouTube. Chris Hanson. Yeah. And it's Hanson versus Predator. I mean, I... I really enjoyed that show. I yeah. love no, it. Just yeah. I still Catch a Predator it. is, in, is just, incredible. They're like, what are you doing? Oh, I just came here to hang out. Your bag is full of condoms. <laughs> yeah. Those are balloons, man. I don't know. <laughs> oh, I don't know how this got in there, man. Like, I was buying Gatorade at the store, and it just something just dropped in, Stuff dude. Stuff sticks, you know, and shipping. There's There's already balloons. lube on your penis, sir. <laughs> I, I was buying chips and just like... <laughs> That's Lay's oil. <laughs> it's great because it's like you get to see somebody completely called out on their bullshit, but you don't feel bad for them because they're who they are. Yeah. So it's just straight up like, I didn't say that. Well, that's <laughs> he always does it like theatrically. He's like, well, well we well. have this giant stack of papers here that's the records. If I just flip <laughs> through, you said this horrible thing. You know what I love, too, for the voices for Hanson versus Predator, like oh. the new one? Oh, no. It's like they won't – Chris won't read them out. Like he used to walk in with, you know, his facts like, wait, well, you touch my – well, my P word, but what is that? You know, like, <laughs> but now they'll just like, they'll hire like young voice actors to no. voice them over on screen. And it's like, they never put any life into it. Cause how can you, you know, yeah. it's just like, what are you doing later? I have a throbbing cock. Would you like it in your face? <laughs> okay. My dad's not home. Like, it's just yeah, like, that's it's not like a, a Microsoft problem. Sandwich. <laughs> yeah. That is not a problem. My favorite part is the usernames are always really good. Yeah. yeah. They're like, Big bald rod, <laughs> seventy-two. I'm Rod Hey, <laughs> as you can see from the username. <laughs> My friends just call me the Rod part, though they don't. Yeah. Big bald, sort of a street now. <laughs> Came up with that one myself. <laughs> um, always good to close out a podcast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> talking about predators. Um, well, yeah. So check out uh, Smosh on Twitter or er, on YouTube. And what's your Twitter handle again? Smoshy in. Smoshy in. Yeah. Thanks sometimes I tell jokes. Sometimes I just shamelessly plug Smosh videos. That's a good idea. But healthy blend. Healthy yeah, blend. Well, yeah. thanks for stopping by, man. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, Thank you guys so honest. much. This is really fun. Mm-hmm. Catch you later. Have folks. me on next time. We'll do it. Oh, wow. <laughs> next, next week or? Uh, next uh, week. I'm on every episode now. A word? It's been decided. Um, Bye. He's not wearing headphones. The so Gus, I, I suppose yeah, we could. If I talk quiet enough, he won't hear me. We could squish his name in the answer and We could maybe, if we put him down, he's putting the headphones on. Okay, I got headphones on now. What are we talking about? Bye, guys. Bye.